the meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board on Monday, December 2nd, 2013. Um, we've got a, a medium-sized agenda, I guess. Uh, the first uh, item of which is the hearing to reopen the EDR special permit for 936 Massachusetts Avenue for signs. If the applicant wants to approach, that would be great. Oh, great. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm not sure exactly how you guys did it. Oh. That appears great. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I know if you do have some extra plans, I'll take one because I did not think so because of the size. Yeah, I'm going to give everybody one of these and it's just, it's tweaked a little bit from the one that was originally sent out. I'll talk to Carol about it and we'll explain it. It's not one of these. Correct. Laura, do you want one of these? If you could, if you could uh, just uh, state your name and sure, address, absolutely. Uh, my name is Tony Fructal. I'm with AU Engineering out of Suffolk, Rhode Island. Uh, with me, Bob Richard, he's with Murray Energy. Um, they own the site. Uh, it's 934 Mass Avenue. It's the Shell Station right down the street here. Um, just part of a, a rebranding program. They want to just make some revisions to the signage on the site that's out there right now. Um, doing some doing some research on the site. Um, the history of the project. There was four um, special permits and/or variances that were granted for the site. The first one was a, a special permit. Um, just the gas station could go in at this site. Um, and that was, I think, late 60s, somewhere along those lines that it was built. Um, February of 93, there was a special permit applied for to revise the signage. Um, it essentially allowed for the existing sign that's in there right now, something very similar to this size-wise, allowed for the, um, uh, the, the markings on the building, uh, allowing for this to be a service center. Um, then in September of that year, there was a special permit requested for a canopy because the canopy wasn't out there at that time. So then that was added. Part of that, part of that um, permit also included signage on on the canopy. Um, the ID sign, the price sign, if you will, was essentially the same. Um, and what it also requested was for two um, logos similar to the ones that were requesting on the canopy at that time. Um, and then in 2001, there was a similar to what we're asking here, rebranding for some signage. And that requested what you see at the site now. The one thing that's a little bit, I think, in limbo was between uh, September of 1993 and uh, 2001, um, what exactly showed, was allowed for on that canopy? And I think Carol and I had talked about this, um, just that it seemed a little bit, we couldn't seem to figure out exactly what was allowed. It's not specified in the decision. The decision um, says that they, the board wants to review the final plan for the sign. And at the time, three proposals were presented, but the decision doesn't describe which one was settled upon. So it left a lot of ambiguity. Yeah, yes. And when we we did the research for the the signage that was revised in 2001, it seemed to indicate that there were two, if you will, signs, logos on the canopy that were removed and replaced with the one word shell, which you see in the upper left hand corner there. Yes, right there. Um, so basically what we're proposing here is a revision to the ID sign, and basically that's just a revision to the look. You can see that on the plan that I just handed you. It actually reduces the, uh, the amount of signage on the ID sign, and then requesting to add the two pectin logos back onto the canopy, which we believe were approved at one time. Um, I'm not sure that I have anything that I can put in their hands that, that shows that. Um, and that's, that's about it. What you see is, is what they're asked on those two plans is what they're looking to do out there. Um, we, we respect the fact that no LED signs on the, on the pricing. Um, the ID price sign also, uh, the only thing that would be lighted would be the shell itself and the actual prices from within, not LEDs. Very similar to what's out there right now. Um, and on the canopy, same thing, the shell would be lighted. Not, none of the canopy, none of the 
yellow, none of the red, or anything like that. Um, building won't change at all, and you know, requesting consideration for that proposal. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'll go down. Uh, Bruce, start with you. Uh, Tony, you, I think you just answered my question for me, but I just want to make sure I'm hearing it correctly. So, on the uh, the price <laughs> panel, um, those are not lights going out. It's not an LED light that's emitting from the sign going out towards the motorist. That's somehow a, like an internal light. It will be backlit. That's okay. correct. Okay. And they, the the red and the green on there are merely distinct to show what color the letters will be, but they those will not be lit up. Okay. So they're, they're not LED. They are not LEDs. They will not. Okay. Be the same. As what's out there right now? Essentially, it's clear. You put a. a Plastic letter on it, and light shines through it, and you see, and this will be essentially the same thing. Okay. The picture of that sign. Oh. It, this this is, it won't have the food mark. Okay. Uh, but this is a sign that would be Melrose Mass, so it'll be that exact sign. Okay. Do you have the pictures of the existing? That's a problem. Um, and then on the, the pectin, <laughs> that <coughs> is, again, it, it's just, uh, it's either backlit or it's an internally lit sign? Yeah, it's internally lit, and the only thing that, um, uh, that is translucent is, is the shell itself. Okay. The, the, what looks is on the sign and on the canopies, what is white there is, is uh, that's opaque, you can't see, the light will not come through that. Okay. Okay. And then the other major change, obviously, is the uh, repainting of the fascia panel. So you have yes, the yellow. Yes, it would just be the yellow band with the red. There's currently a, a red bar that goes around, so that would be very More. similar to what's out there. Now. Okay. Thank you. So the white, right now, it's currently a white band around the canopy yes. with the red. Yes. Right? I just I saw that picture. Correct. Yes. So you're proposing to paint yellow now? Yes. Correct? Yes. To replace the white all the way around? Yes. Which will make it quite a bit brighter. It'll it'll look like your building right now, correct? Yes. Somewhere I saw that picture. Yes. It'll be that yellow all the way around? Yes, it will. All four sides? Yes. Okay. So that's a fair, that's probably the largest change. I don't know what I would say. Um, uh, as far as visibility? Yeah. Uh, if you're asking me to agree with you, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you can agree with right. me, sure. No, but I'm saying, you know, the ID sign is going to be the same size. And everything. So, yes, right. that is correct. You're not going to have any words on the canopy now. No. You're just going to have the logo. Correct. What you see right there is what. And before you had shell in two places, right? On the canopy? Uh, no, the shell was just in one place. Just in one place? Yeah. Okay. So in looking at the decision, Carol, that you sent us, that isn't the final decision. The right? 92? The yeah. Decision? Or the ARB 93 decision? The ARB September 93. 93. September 93. Okay. So in looking at that, um, they were saying that the freestanding shell sign with letters for pricing. Um, the sign should not be larger than 15 square feet. And the existing sign out there is larger than 15 square feet, it looks like. The shell itself. Well, I think if you... You're downsizing it. Uh, if you look at the, um, um, the two parts to that, where it includes the, the area for the logo and or the company name and the pricing sign, mm -hmm. The pricing is 15 square feet, and the the logo is I think 29, which gets which gets you to 44 for the whole thing. Not 39, existing ID sign. 39. Well, what's if you read what's what's in what's here there? is 44. What ended up being built was 39, so it's actually smaller than what. Okay. So then the only difference would be the size of the letters, the height of the letters. In this decision, whether it was 
the final decision or not, it said 12 inches. And now you're going to have some letters that are quite a bit larger than 16 inches. We are proposing 16 inches. And then the other ones are smaller. That is correct. Inches. <clears throat> okay. That was one thing I noticed. Yes. I think that's all the questions I had. The building is staying exactly the way it is. Correct? Correct. Andrew? I think Christine asked the question I was most concerned about, so I don't think I have any questions. I'm okay. Andy? Yep. Yeah. Looks okay. Okay. Um, actually, I think all my questions have been answered as well. Um, let's see. Any other comments or anything else for the applicants? Bruce? Well, this is really more discussion about the right. board as exactly. opposed to a question yeah, please. for the applicant. Um, you know, it's a little vexing when you look at the old decision to try to figure out what our predecessor, predecessor board actually did with respect to the final, um, the final plans. Um, but I think that the fact that the existing scheme has been there for this period of time without, you know, any uh, rumblings from the board that we were displeased with it would indicate that what is there must have complied with whatever the final plans were. So, you know, I'm comfortable, you know, not going back and looking at the 1993 decision to see whether or not you're in compliance, but just accepting that you are in compliance with what you have now. Um, and I'd go on to say that, you know, it looks like in some ways the uh, total square footage of the sign is, is being slightly reduced. Um, and I was uh, pleased to hear that these are not going to be glaring LED lights because that no. was... Uh, a recent town meeting um, right. amendment to the zoning bylaw to prohibit that type of sign. So, uh, with saying that, I would support uh, granting the relief sign. I would agree. Just just from the perspective of um, you know, the, I think I agree. The biggest change is the yellow all the way around the, the yellow, canopy, yeah. and I think that's it's fairly bright, typical. I of, like it better. Of, yeah, and I think it's, <laughs> it's, I think it's fairly brighter. typical. Think, of, yeah. of, yeah. Typical shell brand. Exactly, yeah. shell brand. So it doesn't, and the larger matter. letters, can I see that proposed yep. one again? And actually, Andrew, you the letters are quite a bit larger, but these were actually kind of small. Oops. Yeah, they were. I was actually surprised by this one. Yeah, so that doesn't really bother me either. Okay. And, and can, can I make the case that the bigger letters are actually more of a they're, they're safer for drivers than the small yeah. letters yeah. Yeah. instead of having to kind of turn your head or squint or try and figure out what it says where you, you know, obviously I know you don't, you know. Yeah, they're not that much bigger, so. Yeah. But, you know, a little bit bigger. I'm just going to throw that out there, you know. No, I, it's a good point, I think. And, it, you know, a little less time that the driver's eyes are off the road to check the price is yeah. probably, what probably it's not bad. Yeah. So, uh, Carol, <coughs> what kind of motion uh, should we do here? Are we looking to amend, uh, we're looking to amend the special permit? Just in respect of the sign, um, if we make a motion to that effect, yeah, we'll to okay, modify right? the <coughs> environmental design review special permit, but I think you'd be wise to specify either to specify the number of signs you're approving. Um, you could cite the the, the drawings. Yeah, if you're specific about, we've got three versions of the plan, so right. we want to be specific about what um, what you're approving. Okay. Okay. Um, Bruce, do you want to take a crack, or I think all we're talking about is approving the signage as presented in the. Um, I guess the IO. Engineering, IU engineering plan. plans of. I'm just looking for the date. Yeah, me too. Uh, SG1. Or no, it's SG1. 1115, I think, if you look at the revision block. Okay. Yeah, for clients' requests. Yeah. Uh, I think we should use that because that's the closest. Yeah. They were originally dated October 1. Right. Um, 
Although this last revision had the same date as the one before. Yeah, that's the only issue. Right. So we want to um, just make sure we get the right plan. Yeah, do you, you know, guys know what the right revision is? And then indicated? as presented to the board. Okay. Okay. As, yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, with that, I'll move that the um, special permit uh, in docket number 2892 with respect to the signage at the cell shell service station be amended as shown by the plans prepared by AU Engineering dated October 1st, 2013 as revised on November 15th, 2013 and has presented to the board this evening, December 2nd, 2013. Second. Okay. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Great. Great. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are you going to work on that pretty quickly? Or? Yeah, no, we are. Uh, we'll just take this. Um, we'll, mark it it'll, it'll probably be done um, in January. Oh, yeah. We yeah. want to get the painting done. Yeah, it's a good idea. We could use it. We could use it. Some building work yeah. done and really just um, bring it back to where it should be. Yeah. Sounds good. It's supposed to be recorded. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, you know, I can tell I can tell you more. Yeah. I just want to make sure you get it. That's a nice idea. Yeah. They have, um, yeah. everything looks fresh. Found. Yeah. You know, we just did a station oh, okay. up in um, Bill Rick's. Okay. Uh, yeah. And so, you'll we'll have somebody put that together. Just, you know, from, know from, from, from what it looks. Yeah. 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 Okay. And we just really, it yeah. spruces it up. So, you'll get a copy. some money into it. A reminder to record it. Carol, do you want to hold on to all these? Do you need these if I sit down? Thanks again. Sure. Great holiday. Okay, thanks, yep. you too. So you, um, you, your motion referred to the November 15th submission and as presented tonight, uh, to, the tonight to the board on yeah. December 2nd, 2008. So that should probably be included too, since that's an example. Yeah. What should be included? This one. As an example of that sign. Just if you're going to include that packet right there, just you can include it in the packet. This For, wasn't in the packet. Oh, what did that? But it was presented. That, 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 I, I had that. Okay, so all right. I'll the only difference. <laughs> on our agenda is to um, speak with representatives from the Transportation Advisory Committee uh, to review uh, the warning beacon at Mill Street uh, Minuteman bike path uh, as required by the special permit for all the ribbons. So if I could invite uh, folks up here. Back. Back. Nice. So we uh, and just so Carol can take it down, just uh, oh. and we can get it on. If, if you could introduce yourselves, yeah, that'd sure. be great. Yeah, uh, Jeff Max Tudis uh, from Tech. Uh, Scott Smith from the Tech. You looking for me to say your name? Did I say <laughs> Laura Leah from, from the staff. Leah <laughs> and yeah. Leah's on to Tech for the right. ARB and planning. Department. Thanks. Great, Max. Uh, thanks. So uh, I'll start off, and Scott, uh, you know, what will add to it. Um, so we, for we formed a working group when Alto was proposing their project you know, 
few years ago, and um, there was a traffic impact study done. And out of that, we identified a need for improving the safety at the bike path crossing at Mill Street, and there are a couple other items also as mitigation that they provided. Um, but that's one of them. Um, the issue was uh, safety of crossings. There's some limited sight distance, particularly for motorists. They can't see people coming up on the path quickly, especially if a bicycle's coming quick. They don't have time to react to that. So there hasn't been a, a lot of actually recorded accidents there, but a lot of near misses and frustration with uh, motorists, pedestrians, and bicyclists. So um, we evaluated some options, and we thought this flashing beacon was, uh, was a good solution that uh, Alta agreed to install. Um, and then we would monitor the operations after the project was occupied. I understand the project's 80 or 90 85 or 90 percent occupied now. Um, so it was installed um, by a contractor uh, with the engineer, under the direction of an engineer for Alta. Uh, there were some initial problems with the timing and detection of that, uh, that signal. I mean, we might have talked about this before, I don't remember. Um, the, the crossing time with the flashing, it would flash yellow for motorists on Mill Street and, and red for you know, folks on the bike path. And that, that crossing was too long initially. It was, um, I forgot what it was, but we need 20s, 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 20s or something. And yeah. So it's now uh, you know, appropriate. It's in 15, yeah. 16 second range. But we can't really get any shorter than that because that only gets a slow pedestrian to the far lane on Mill Street. Right, right. Yeah. So it's, we've, we've, we went out there about 10 days ago or so. Uh, so that, that timing was fixed. Mm -hmm. And we did a site visit uh, to monitor conditions about uh, 10 days ago. And um, what we found was that the detection uh, zone was appropriate. We mar marked it off. Um, and it was detecting. You can see that there's an indicator light that goes on. But there wasn't enough power to um, power the, the flashing lights. Okay. And um, it, was an, it was an overcast day. And um, you know, we, we think it may be um, a, a power issue um, that the battery can't, um, because it gets a lot of usage. Mm -hmm. Some of these other um, flashing beacons in other places, like the Bruce Freeman Trail, mm -hmm. places like that, they're solar powered, but they don't get as many, <laughs> right. as many crossings right. as, mm -hmm. as we get. And we, we think that, you know, that that could be an issue of that, you know, the, solar, the solar panels and the batteries may have power. Powerful enough to you know, provide that, that many indications, and um, the other issue is the, the difference in the users, in, in, the, in bikes and heads. Yeah, the, uh, yeah you know, about the beacon itself. There's really two significant issues. One is a design issue, is that the the detection zone is maybe about ten feet back from the, uh, which is just right for pedestrians, but. If you have a cyclist, you know, and if a cyclist is approaching and is preparing to stop, it will detect that person too. But it'll be way too late for a cyclist who's coming at it fast. And to really make it dual mode, you would need to have two detectors, one aimed further upstream of the intersection along the path, calibrated to a higher speed than the existing one. Now. How well would this work, given the other issues? I don't don't know, but that's to me that's it's you know, pretty we, complex. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of yeah. complex, but so uh, the uh, you know in terms of warning fast cyclists, it's doing nothing essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, the other issue, as Jeff alluded to, is our working hypothesis is that it is a power issue, and this is because it's been. Out, the outages have been more and more as the days have gotten shorter and darker. Mm -hmm. you know, last summer, not really a problem. Right. And, uh, and then we observed that occasionally it would switch on in the afternoon. It was a sunny day. And then we'd go out again. Mm -hmm. uh, Is it LED? Uh, don't think the flashing red is. The, I'm not sure. Because that would take less, yeah, a lot less energy if it was changed to LED. Yeah. 
they might well, be able to put in a bigger battery too. Well, yeah, yeah, the, uh, yeah. I think um, you know, we asked uh, DPW, you know, get all the data you can on it, on how mm. much each the power each piece of it consumes, and the battery size, and everything else. Yes. And said, you know, at this point, it's not working properly, and it was an issue that becomes really apparent when the days get shorter. If it were working perfectly, as envisioned, what would be happening? What would um, the light be doing and when, and what would the uh, people be doing? Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I was going to say, some of it's aware awareness for the motorists. Yeah. Uh, in, in much as it indicates when someone's approaching, but if it's operating properly, if it's not flashing, actually it would be more we would have more comfort in that there wouldn't be somebody there. So right now, before the, the flash was put in, a lot of people would stop or slow down anyways, very, very cautiously, which is, but it's, it, which is okay. Is but it supposed to stop flashing when no one's there? Yes. Right. Correct. Right. And uh, that's what I saw informally. I noticed that the other place I look at a lot is Lake Street, and there people will often stop. On, they don't need to, and what I've seen is people on mill back when it was working, you know, during during the summer, you know, they, they would feel the confidence to go when the beacon wasn't on, and they'd be cautious when the beacon was on, which is the behavior we want. Right. Yeah. So, what what are people on the path supposed to do? Yeah, so it's, it, it's as if it were, yeah. the bicyclists are supposed to stop if they're mount, mounted on a bicycle if they get off the pedestrian. Pedestrian has the right of way. Yeah. Vehicles have to yield to a pedestrian. A bicyclist that does not have the right of way, if they're riding across the crosswalk, although they often act as they do. Mm -hmm. And this, this light can't, it's not going to change that. Um, maybe some signage. Might but they do get a red. They get a red flashing. They get a red flashing, and there is a stop sign. All also. right. But I think one, one source of confusion is, is researching laws around the country. Is that many other states, a bike and a crosswalk is treated the same as a pedestrian, mm -hmm. which is not the law here. But I think it is. But it does. If you understand that, that is the rule in some other states, it kind of explains the behavior that we're seeing. Mm -hmm. Is there a? I can't remember a warning yeah. sign in addition to the flashing yellow on the road? Yes. To tell people yeah. that yes. it's there? Yeah. Yeah. If there's no buddy driving by, it's just there's no warning light on the bike path. That's no, no, the, the, the warning detects path users. So if there's nobody, basically, you know, the, the detection does not go to traffic, traffic. on Mill Street. It goes to traffic on the path. Mm -hmm. So. If there's nobody on the path, there's no warning light. Under when it's working. The other when it's working. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, when, 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 there, when there's somebody on the path within 10 feet of the intersection, everything comes on whether there's any traffic on Mill Street or not. But if you're on the bike path, is there any warning of that intersection? There are no lights or anything that go on? Aside from the light, is there any signage? I th I'm sure there well, there's well, no, is. There we have to double check. Yeah, it's the red light because the, the, the detection of of the bike itself, so or of the person itself. So when the yeah. person comes into the zone, two things happen. One is is the motorists get a flashing yellow yeah, on yeah. either side. The um, the people on the path on either side. I'm assuming it's both get sides. Red yeah. Get the red light. But what if there are no vehicles? The same thing doesn't because it's only the it's only so you, you be, always get a red. You light. always get the red. Right, yeah, exactly. You the always get the red. It's only activated on the bike path approaches. Yeah. yeah. Always that's get a red light. Yeah. Is. So as you approach there, you'll always get a red light whether you're... If it's working. Right. Yeah. So if there's no sign there and it's not working, somebody may not know there's an intersection that, if they're on their bike. Mm -hmm. Well, there, 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 is, light. There, there is a sign there. Yeah, it's kind of on the, the not usual side going westbound. There's, there's, a, there's, there's a stop sign also. Yeah, yeah there, there's, a, there's a stop sign there and... What I've, seen, what, I, what I've seen on path behavior is you know, they're aware that they're approaching a big road. Mm. And it's very rare I see somebody just riding in with no awareness. Yeah. So I guess part of the concern is that yeah. 
if you had been successful in changing people's behavior with the broken light, it probably harms things even worse because both are, you know, waiting for the blinking light. I've got no blinking light, I can go. Yellow it's, blinking it's light. Right. It's worse if they, and, right. yeah. Yeah. And they change their behavior for that. And exactly. now it's not working and someone's coming, so that's, exactly. that's not a good thing. That's, not a, that's, not, a good, that's yeah. not a good thing. That's so, a good thing. Um, so from that perspective, do we, so I guess two questions. Number one, and maybe this is the more basic question for this discussion, is assuming it can be fixed, is it the right solution? Uh, or, you know, is it some semblance of the right solution that just needs to be tweaked or, or what have you? Mm -hmm. um, and then if, it, if it's determined that it is the right solution, then what needs to be done in order to get it fixed? Um, and I think those obviously are the two big questions. So, right. um, but, but with respect to it being the right solution, where's the tax kind of opinion of that? All things, you know, working well in order and everything else. Where are your heads at after a year of it working, you know, or six months or however long you got it when it was working okay? Yeah, I mean, that, I think it provides benefit. Okay. Now, where this is, I don't think there's a perfect solution there. Right. You know, but I, but I think it does provide some safety benefit. Okay. When, it, when, it, when it's working properly. Okay. The fast bikers are the ones that it's not it's, ever going to work. I'm not sure it's ever going to work. That's, that's, a, that's right. a problem because we have a very successful path. Um, for yeah. all, all types of users, you know, commuters and recreationals and weekends. It's also a problem if you, if you approach on uh, Mill Street in a vehicle and you're, you stop for, and it's, it's um, flashing yellow, and you stop, and the um, bike path um, users have passed, and you're waiting for it to stop flashing, and then you, the ones down here, the users down here see that, oh, the traffic has stopped, so they start to race across when the light stops. The light's just about to stop. Mm -hmm. And that that creates um, some near misses too, even when it is working. So it's mm -hmm. is that acceptable? I mean you you have that situation without the light. I think mm -hmm. people are trying to yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I don't think it seems like uh, that we're, we're telling people don't worry there's a light there you can behave how you like <laughs> and, but, but that that create to, to me it creates a very uncomfortable ambiguity that wouldn't exist if there weren't a light or if we're going to have a light it seems like we should have a traffic light yeah, <laughs> yeah I think real stop light. let's talk you know, you know talk about the, you know, the objectives here is the you know, two objectives are safety at yeah. the intersection for everyone, yeah. mobility for path users, mobility for motorists on Mill Street. Uh, and if one thing you'll know, point out first on safety, yeah, there, there's some near misses here and then a few crashes, but in terms of bike crashes, there's far more along Mass Ave mm -hmm. than at any of the path, path intersections. You know, in terms of you know, bicycle cra crashes of cars, so half intersections aren't even on the hot spot list for the most part. Uh, but you know, there's always always some room for improvement. I don't like it when the path users go in there very fast, and you know, cyclists, but also occasionally runners. The last person to hit at Lake Street was a runner. Uh, can I ask you, would you finish? I'll ask a question. About yeah, that. and then, and, and similarly, is drivers on Mill Street, especially coming fast off of summer, was our concern from a safety standpoint. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're trying to get everyone to slow taking down. Taking that right. Yeah, 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 taking that right. Uh, mobility, I think uh, that, that if you're if it, if it gets, I don't think it's a bottleneck yet for the Mill Street corner and your two traffic lights are, but you know, your, your real solution, and I'm not sure how well it would work, is you know, it's the same as a, a real traffic light there coordinated with the one up at Supper Street. But that's much, much bigger scale, much more expensive. Don't know how effective it would yeah. be because you taking one set of issues and creating another. Right. Yes. So, yeah. If you if you coordinate the signal, you know, 
crossings very close to summer. Yeah. If you put that signal in, it would yeah. have to be, if you didn't coordinate it, you yeah. have queuing issues, you yeah. know, spilling over. If you coordinate it, you're going to have longer queues on summer street because you have yeah. longer clearance times. Yes, yeah. it's it's close, but it's far enough apart that you'd have to clear that entire distance <coughs> between the two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Operationally, it would, it would be worse for traffic. Would it be safer? Maybe. I don't know what our bikes can do with a, you know, our bikes well, going well, wait at a regular signal. I don't know. Put it th this way, neither pedestrians or cyclists have all that much respect for traffic signals. Well, that's, you know, if, you yeah. if you put a signal in, you're going to expect the um, yeah. pedestrians to wait and bicyclists to wait on a delay, like a, yeah. a regular signal. Oh, yeah. some, some, well, some will wait and some won't. How, how does it compare to? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, I was just gonna. Uh, it, it looks like on the bike path, uh, there are some uh, modifications being made to certain sections as they approach um, uh, Mystic Street now. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, but there's uh, some change in the pavement, um, and it looks like maybe there's a. a it's just probably designed to slow people down as they're uh, arriving at Mystic Street, and I'm wondering if. So that approach, in conjunction with, uh, with, with the blinking light system, um, would rein in the bicyclists who are going fast as they approach Mill Street. Or, you know, I know I guess in Lexington you have like a, almost like a gate, you know, on, on, on yeah. some sections. Yeah. Or ballers. Um, or ballers, yeah. yeah. So, it, would you have I mean, you given I'm, any I'm thought I'm to I'm not it? familiar with the thing with at Mystic Street. Yeah, it just yeah, happened yeah. today. It's like so a textured paving? It looks like there's two or three sections of textured paving that are going in. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't have a chance to really ask anybody what they yeah. were doing. Maybe they're just doing the stamped. On the street? Is which a lot of times they do in the median. A lot of times they put in a median with a bollard. Right. Yeah. And the bollards on both sides to narrow it. Right. So yeah. people have to slow down because okay. you're right. narrowing it. Okay. Uh, a couple of comments. Uh, well, one is when, when the path was first built, it actually had these uh, granite rumble strips coming into all the intersections. Okay. Yeah. And there were murder on the inline, remember, inline skating was a much bigger thing back then. <laughs> 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 they were removed when the path was repaved because they themselves created some safety issues. Okay. Uh, I've heard third hand that the that Lexington is having some issues with the gates for emergency vehicle access. Okay. Oh. Uh, and one challenge with this is that you, know, you have your families with like the child in a trailer mm -hmm. going slowly, and you can't narrow it too much because you don't want that getting caught. Mm -hmm. uh, and. So what I've also seen is Lexington has had to increase the paving around the gates to give enough room to get by. So, you know, to the old cases, it's like narrowing a road for traffic calming. Yeah. Yeah. Either, either you've, you've really messed up the trucks or you haven't been all that effective on the ordin on the car drivers. Right, so you're, yeah. you're, you're solving one problem for yeah. yeah. two yeah. But if you just put in a say a bollard in the center and a bollard on the sides, it's a visual narrow. Well, it, it doesn't yeah. physically narrow it that much, but it's enough to, you know, it's like street trees along a street make yeah. you go slower because visually you're feeling more confined. Like I would slow down, you know. Yeah. A less experienced biker would slow down because more prudent biker, maybe. Or what? Prudent. Yeah. Prudent biker, yeah. yeah. And, and they also sometimes, um, in newer bike paths, mark right on the pavement yeah. in big white letters, a big cross, and the words crossing. Yeah. Yeah. Just I, I, as an extra warning ahead of time for the I, bikes. Yeah, one, one thing. Um, I'm a reserve judgment on the bollard idea because we can always think about what will, will cause more safety harm than what you're. For people running into it, uh, than uh, what you're what you're doing. Pavement markings, I see, could make some sense. They're pretty scarce, like clear stop line, clear crosswalk. Say, so, oh, by the way, there's a sidewalk here. It's really a crosswalk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, could could help. That's would the that, what, would, what would be easy? Yeah. yeah. The bollards, most of the time, that nowadays they put a median around yeah. it, yeah. so that people see it and feel it, and yeah. don't, in case they don't see it, they hit, they feel it. Yeah. The bumps, but. I, know, I know emergency, I know there was um, a 
saw I saw an emergency vehicle on the bike path just a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't I don't know what the response would be from the emergency. Yeah, yeah that would be, be interesting. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I can't comment on, on what they would say. Yeah. I think they'd have to be removable and unlocked at all times. Yeah. But as uh, you know. I, I think the goal of slowing the bikers down is, is valid. Yeah, how, how, to, how to do that, that, that would create its own safety issues, I guess. Yeah. Right. How does that intersection compare to Lake Street? Because Lake Street it's, gets, it seems... Well, I would say La Lake Street sees more pedestrian more, traffic. Probably more, yeah. More pedestrians, about half pedestrians. And the other thing about Lake Street is I think in the morning, and that's just because of the geometry around that neighborhood. Mm. It has become the bottleneck because oh, it's feeding in from Lake and from Brooks right. all the time. Yeah. And it's like that's literally the bottleneck on that corridor. Uh, and so, so it is. Lake Street. Yeah. I'm just wondering, comparing so. like pre signal, the two were kind of maybe they weren't ever equal intersections, they had their own particular things. And there's never been a flashing single no, signal there's at, lake. Nothing at lake. So accident-wise, I was just wondering. They're kind, of, com more they're or kind less of comparable. Comparable. A few low. Even after the signal, or no, no, there's no no signal. No, I'm sorry. Pre signal. You said the pre -si that. You're saying pre-signal on Mill Street is comparable to Lake Street now. I mean, do we think that there's been fewer accidents at Mill Street because well, of the signal? Let's, so let's back up. There were yeah. so few accidents, we really can't. Tell okay, so there's so, okay. uh, no, on this yeah, fashion. No, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the other thing I noticed when I was watching this, is that, you know, a bunch of us have been out there watching what happens, is there's that little what, Mill Street connector, whatever that thing mm -hmm. is called. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gets interesting when someone tries to turn left out of there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> the one at the medical building? Yeah, oh, no. No, no, no. Side. Side. Well, right next yeah, to the path. Oh, or right. Uh, yeah, that, that, that is why, why the yeah. westbound beacon had to be put on the wrong side of the path. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm. yeah. Andy, we cut you off. No, that's fine. They asked all the right okay, questions. Okay, she did. About okay. The, um, yeah. Bike slowing down the bikes. I think that's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Figure well, out something. Like that. Let's go back to Mike's two big yeah. you know, picture questions. Yeah. Is it the right solution? And if so, how, how do we fix it? Do you have uh, recommendations? Well, the, what would the recommendation be for getting the signal to work consistently? Well, one could be going to full, you know, uh, you know traditional power. Yeah. You know, yeah. full, full time. Now that, um, Lori, correct me if I'm wrong, the town um, doesn't actually uh, own, I'll say own, the, the equipment right. right now. I think that uh, um, Wood Partners All the still way. owns okay. it until sign off on, and the town accepts that, that yeah. signal operation. I, I don't so. think it's written that way. I mean, all there is is this escrow fund of $40,000 that we have a year from a year from occupancy, which is March. Mm -hmm. So this March, 2014, um, the escrow account is supposed to be returned. Mm -hmm. So was, the, was that escrow that used for to, the? It was used for the signal, though. No. No. Oh. No, that, they use that. The forty thousand is to adjust the signal, or oh. to or to take it out if we decide to do that. Put it in a different one. it with something else. It, it's for the crossing, really. You know. So we. But it's it's not there's no condition that says the town has to sign off on it per se. Yeah, but I suppose in the course the of returning the money, we are in fact yeah. signing off on it. We could exactly. say that if we're ready to do when that. When the DPW researches it, they may find that the newer they've just come out with new ones not that long ago that are all LED that oh. have a more sufficient battery. I just yeah. saw one demonstrated. Okay. Um, and they're supposed to be far superior than the old ones. I don't know how long ago that one was put in. Last winter. I mean, that so was just last winter. Less, that's less that's than, fairly new. Year. That's yeah. fairly new. But if it's not LED, if the battery's too small, maybe they're easy fixes. Could be. Or they replace that with one that works better all around because it has LED and a bigger, you know, if it doesn't have the space for a bigger battery, then you won't be able to put one in. So is Wood Partners responsible for replacing it if it's not working? Well, I think we use the escrow fund to, oh, 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 if it's not working to begin with. Well, no. It's not working right now. Right. Well, I mean, that is sort of one of the problems, is that 
So we're working with this consultant who would partners had hired, and he's kind of not hasn't been all that reliable too. Is that is that fair to say? Um, from your side. I think I think so. I won't so right. too much so on it's, that, but, it's yeah. been a little bit hard to try new things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But but we are running out of time. Really, we have to yeah. make some decisions. And we have funds. Fairly soon, and we have funds. So do we know how much that cost? The whole, the whole thing. Yeah. Not even bread boxes. And I don't remember how much the new ones. The guy that is selling the new ones, they're not that new, actually. Yeah. I think the LED light might be new. That might be the new improvement. He said that there's a bunch of them around the state on bike paths. Mm -hmm. okay. Maybe you should get the name of your guy. Yeah. It could be what's out there. I don't know. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I could send that name. I know. The, I think the, I have his The card. electrician is Daigle. Do you know Daigle? The local. I don't. But don't we contact your partners? They're still responsible for making it work. Well, maybe what we do is we try to find out the answer that we want, and then and we then tell them what, we'll, yeah. Yeah. that that's what we want. I mean, if, yeah. if the consultant is not being extremely helpful, it's maybe it consultant. makes a little bit more sense right, so to... Right, our consultant. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, then, yeah. then we can't apply the 40 to that consultant. Um, yeah, I think we can. Yeah. Can we? It's pretty, pretty open. Okay, so we tell them, look, your consultant's not moving, we're going to use our own, but it's applied to the 40K, and then the remedy will be let you know. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I don't really think you need a consultant at this point no. to get it you know, working properly. Yeah. Who um, would DPW's research? You just go to the He's manufacturers. The oh, I'm, well, yeah. Wayne. 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 Yeah. Wayne. We, we, at the last TAC meeting, we briefly discussed this and said, well, let's you know, research if their usage yeah. logs from the thing. And you know what? What pieces of it consumes? How much power, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, yeah. Figure out. I could send Wayne issues. the name that I know of. Yeah. And he yeah. can just compare yeah. with them, maybe and give the guy a call. Or could we go to the manufacturer of the current one and say, "Do you know how to remedy this?" Yeah, and that too. Must have gotten that. That's what Wayne's before. doing. Right. Yeah. I think that that's what oh, you know, Wayne was trying to do. He was trying to contact yeah. the manufacturer. I think he thought he was looking for some kind of specs that would help him debug it, and he was not able to find it. So he was going to then contact yeah. the manufacturer. That's the first step. Yeah, that would definitely be the yeah. first step. They may have, I'm sure they have, they've installed lots of different conditions, and they may find that this could be either remedied or might have to go to yeah. hard so, part. So I do think it's important to try to figure out whether we can get it working again. It sounds like the tax still believes that this is a good solution, uh, or uh, on our way to a solution for oh, that yeah. particular yeah. intersection. Yeah, yeah, I, we, I hate to say. We still think it has benefit. It has benefit. benefit. Okay. Yeah. But it also right. seems to me that maybe, given the funds and given the March deadline, maybe some more thought into things that could be put onto the um, uh, the bike path itself for markings even, or even signage or sign, or you know, really. or. Maybe look into a bollard or something. I, I I don't know. I mean, I'd I'd hate for us to lose this opportunity to yeah, yeah. to be additive to what's already there and make it better. Um, yeah. One. Well, I'll ask I'll ask this board. Uh, there's one early concept a few of us had was putting a little curve in the bike path right behind the development. Mm -hmm. To basically do the visual thing. Mm. Uh, Just look and, and I think that got shut down, shut down because there wasn't enough room. Mm. Just wanted to confirm that. Yeah, it's also a very steep slope on one side, so you have to do it all on the. Uh, I don't think Mill it was um, really. Well, it considered very much. It, was it wasn't. Kind of just, it was just. I don't think there were any measurements or anything. No, no, no. It didn't get didn't get beyond the sketch stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just to have a little wiggle in the straight, otherwise yeah. straight line. Yeah. Yeah. There is a yeah, big grass strip there. Yeah, I just can't. I think there's yeah. a yeah, there are, that. Yeah, there are, I've seen that where you might have an angle, um, yeah. an opposing angle approach on either side of the crossing. Yeah. So yeah. it's not just physical, uh, visual, but it's also physical. You, you, right. you have to... You've, you've turned someone the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, that did come up, but I don't think it was... It, it didn't go anywhere, so... I think it's worth considering, or, yeah. or, or at least um, checking, out. checking out to see if there is the space to try to achieve that. I guess physical is certainly stronger than visual, especially for those commuters that do it every day. The visual yeah. gets lost. Yeah. And the big point is, is I mean, I don't want to say we have to spend the funds or anything like that. Definitely don't yeah. want to do that, but we do have access to them if we yeah. think that it can be made, right. you know, uh, safer. So. 
I think yeah, that's if, a good thing to look if you could yeah. maybe think a little yeah. bit more, and, and we'll do the same, and maybe we yeah. can uh, sure. in a month's time or a month or yeah. month and a half, maybe we can meet. Sure. Maybe yeah. mid yeah. mid January, so that we can actually you know have right. six weeks before it's up, <laughs> yeah, right? We right. don't want yeah. we don't want to push it much more than that. I don't think so. Even a warning sign to the stop sign, maybe. Yeah. Either painted or. Yeah, I think there's more that can be done with paint. Yeah. Paint yeah. catches people's yeah. attention because yeah. they're kind I of I agree. Cross hatching, you know, can signs get can lost. Work. Yeah, or even a real stop bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's a law that bikes have to stop at at that stop sign, right? Bikes are treated the same as cars. It's supposed to stop right. at yeah. the stop bar. Maybe having some police officers there, like they do at Lake Street. Yeah. They did that for yeah. a few weeks. That's right? definitely getting beyond that our. Uh, yeah, <laughs> well, definitely getting beyond yeah, our powers. They did it at Lake Street anything. for like I understand. A week. I'm just yeah. saying. I passed out flyers. I think, <laughs> I think they gave out people. the first ticket to a bike bicyclist not long ago. On Lake Street. There was an accident. Yeah, well, no. well, 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 this. <laughs> well, I mean, well, the, the, actually, Jeff's point illustrates really the misunderstanding. Yeah. People have on the law. This, this person was riding across the crosswalk, the Water Street, down, down there, mm -hmm. and my car hit her. She hit a car. Mm -hmm. You know, and said, "Look, if you'd been just gotten off and walked, that would have been the motorist's fault then." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just gotten. <laughs> you know. But I don't. Yeah. Like probably going coming from one of those states where the law rules are different. Yeah. Yeah. Reliability is one thing, but death is another. Yeah, <laughs> but I think this yeah. is the, pro the process we said we would monitor, right. and evaluate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and we have been right. at that point, and I, I yeah. think it's appropriate to consider uh, some maybe some additive stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah, great. Well, anything else by the board? Thank you. And uh, yeah. anything from from you folks? You're good. Uh, I think so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On that. So, do you want yeah. to have the uh, have Tack come back in a, in a month? Um, you? Would you be willing in about six weeks' time, maybe? Um, we've got the 16th, and then right after would be like January. Well, I won't say the second, but whatever that you know, okay. maybe the fifth or whatever, mm -hmm. which would take us to the or probably around the 19th. Which when is the March <laughs> deadline? Oh, um, is it is it early March or late March? I don't want to say mid March, but mid March. We can yeah, so so about six weeks. Um, you know, the the mid January um, meeting might be a nice uh, January thirteenth, maybe. Yeah. That's uh, not good. There is. You'll be away on the thirteenth. Twenty seventh. Might be a little bit late, but yeah, if we could maybe have, you know what, if if we did it that late, yeah. maybe if you had a little bit better ideas. Some, some you know, or draft, uh, I mean, not better ideas. Um, some more concrete ideas is what I meant by that. Yeah. But also, the manufacturer, we should be able, to, we should be able to get an answer on that yeah. fairly soon. Yeah. Calling them and saying, "Are there any remedies you know of to your product in a northeastern environment?" Yeah, the environment. Rain's already on the way. What's hopefully. the story, guys? Right. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I think the other thing you need. Well, the other other thing that's unique is the automatic actuation and the extremely heavy usage of the path. Right. Well, but they, they Actually, should, I've seen a similar thing. They might have a warranty on this thing. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm sure yeah. they do. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's the yeah. first thing, at least to find out. Right. Yeah. Well, I think I think you might get them moving a little bit better um, if they've yeah. not been as cooperative as you may have liked. If yeah. all of a sudden you're saying, well, if you're not going to go on the warranty, then we're going to start dipping into the money. And I think you'll see a move maybe a little bit faster on it. Do we so. know how many, approximately how many times it goes off on an average day? Because that would help as we're talking, to, as Wayne talks to manufacturers. Because they might also, oh yeah, we can handle that, but they, they don't know what they're handling. Right. That would kind of size the light for us. Well, we, battery. Think, uh, we have bike cuts uh, on, on the path, right? But it's like a couple, of, uh, well, also and pedestrians. So we're, little, we're looking at a couple thousand a day. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty it's pretty one of those pretty heavy uses. So let's say like 2,000 a day. So don't tell them the busiest little trails in the country. So. Right. If you have right. that somewhere, that data, that would be we helpful. We have it right? one place. Exactly. That would be helpful to give yeah, to Wayne also. Yeah. Because yeah. that does seem to be one of the problems. 
And I guess the other, other thing I should just mention is, uh, is, as we mentioned, we're also looking at Lake Street, which has somewhat similar issues. And the third thing that I'm about to go off to the Stuckman's meeting right after this is uh, Tool Design Group took a look at the path as a whole for the three communities. And uh, ABAC is presenting you know, our comments on it to the selectmen probably right about now. Uh, and they may have, and it also has some thoughts on what might be done about the intersections. So, start mm -hmm. looking at this on a tri community basis. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To coordinate. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, one, one thing is we're very aware of you know, it's a regional facility. So, we want to be consistent with what Lexington and Bedford do. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. That's possible. Good for users. That consistency, yeah. I think, would help with that safety message of how you practice on the bike path. Right. It helps you yeah. successfully navigate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you, thank you very you much. Thank you. Yeah. thank you very much for coming thank out. You. Really appreciate it, yeah. as usual. So, Great explanation. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. Good. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good holiday. Thank you, Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thanks. And we'll coordinate the date and everything okay, great. else with yeah. you folks. Okay. So, right. okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, you're welcome. We're talking about um, meeting dates. Yes, next meeting. Do you think we'll have? Or do for schedule? Yeah. For the four, yeah, I'm hopeful. What we're trying to do is stagger our this board's meeting on alternate Mondays to the board's lesson. Um, okay. To try and yeah, we always seem to be clashing up against so yes. Lewis in Carroll, years Laura. Past, I've tried to do that, but you're you're kind of limited because there are so many Monday Monday holidays. So we yeah. end up there may be an a month where you have to have a single meeting or two meetings in a row to stay alternate right. to the board. So we'll figure it out, but we want the board selectmen to issue their um, schedule first. Okay. And I understand that it's still in development. So as soon as we have that, I'll try to put together a draft schedule for you folks. Okay. Any problems with Monday nights generally? No, okay. no. So it's not like you have a, a permanent commitment on the off nights for the redevelopment board good. Okay. Well, I built my world around this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not that there was a lot to build. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate your flexibility, so um, I'm going to uh, look for a pattern of like second and fourth Mondays, but okay. it's like I said, it's not going to be that consistent every month. That's what we'll work towards so that on a night like tonight, this board, some members might want to go to the board side. Or right. vice versa. Well, they might want to come to your meeting. So. And I think the other thing is, too, is I don't think it's all that bad if we do miss a meeting along there, because I think we all know that if we need to have a meeting, we can try to schedule a meeting. I mean, we certainly did it during Sims. You know, when mm. we get busy, that happens. But as we saw, as we, you know, near the August, September time frame, when it quieted down a little bit, I mean, you know, there was no reason to make work either so right. so I think I think it's fine if you come up with somewhere where maybe there's a stretch of two weeks you know there's mm -hmm. there's two weeks in between so okay. so the third the third one just to avoid it I think that's fine because we can try to work a meeting in there if we need to yeah. does that make more does sure. that make sense yeah. I think so good all right okay well that's good um, the next thing is more informational and just a discussion than anything else um, it's uh, the discuss the inventory of the Arlington 360 performance obligations. I, I think you might remember, um, and not everyone was at the last meeting, but what we've asked Jonathan Book uh, at Foley Hoag to do is to take a look at the uh, LBA, take a look at the special permit, and come up with a matrix of obligations um, that need to be performed under each of those uh, so that with a lot of staff help, <laughs> we can go back and take a look at those obligations and start checking boxes uh, that Arlington 360 is indeed completed. Mm -hmm. So um, I got something from Jonathan last Wednesday, right before Thanksgiving. It looked like one of those that, okay, I got to get this out. Um, and uh, it needs some work. So I didn't want to present it to the board yet, and I'd like to go through 
It's got some markings on it. It's a, it needs to be cleaned up a little bit. So my notion is is to try to get that done sometime this week. Um, work with staff and get their you know comments on mm -hmm. on the matrix itself, and then get it out to uh, board members. I think the 16th right now is a pretty busy meeting. If I'm not mistaken. And in fact, I have to be at two meetings at night. Yeah. So, so it might be difficult to do it, uh, to go through the actual matrix at that meeting. Um, maybe we can at least discuss the matrix, even if we can't check all the boxes. Uh, but I'd like to at least get it on the agenda for the 16th. Maybe we'll be in a position to really kind of dig deep and, and get into it and, you know, get everyone comfortable that the um, developer has met its obligations. Uh, because in the end, I foresee um, the uh, enforcement officer the, 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 um, asking us for our, our opinion as to whether um, things have been met, um, such as bonds, et cetera. Um, mm -hmm. And so, so I think it will be important for us to have a good concept of what's required and a good concept of whether we think it's, it's been accomplished. So. Um, so that's just kind of, so any comments? Does that sound like an okay plan for everybody? Um, There's nothing coming up before we're able to review it that has to be addressed, is it? Um, that's the only thing I was worried about. No, I mean, but we're that's the point. Anything. But that's the point. I mean, it, it, I there, mean, before the, if we push it off till January to go through it, is there something in December? No, all this is is pretty much, this isn't deciding that they need to do something necessarily. I mean, if they haven't done it, obviously they need to do it. Um, but I think staff, as when they're going through and something hasn't been done, they're not going to wait for the board, you know, to say it hasn't been done. Okay. Or, you, you know, this is, this is not something, it's a working, it's a, it's a working list. I'm thinking of the conservation restriction. Right. Of course. <laughs> yeah. And that. Uh, Right. It's Certainly more like a list just to that. be sure we have a, a, a container with every obligation in it. Mm -hmm. okay. Not necessarily to be able to look in the container and say, oh, these are all cooked, but yeah. mostly just to be sure we have them all listed. And it's charting the course to the issuance of the final, final certificate of, of occupancy. Right. So the when the is. building inspector says, okay, is everything done? Yeah. We've got a, a chart that says, yeah, we've got check marks against all these items, so we're good. And mm. if you ask Jonathan Book, it's not even necessarily the final CO, it's the completion certificate that they're going to request mm -hmm. at the end, is, is, is in his mind. But we can go over that when okay. we go over the list. It, it's, it's, it's when they come and say, okay, so we're done. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not necessarily the, the final CO, it's how he looks at it. So, uh, just a different. Maybe it's semantics, uh, but semantics. but it's more uh, a, a certificate of completion to say that all the conditions of the special permit Correct. and the LDA have exactly been met. because in his opinion the certificate of occupancy is about health and safety. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if you were to ask him by the letter of the law, certificates of occupancy are only about health and safety. Right. But of completion. I think, yeah. I, I think where the, the the concepts merge though a little bit is that the you know the, that sense of completion is tied into the certificate of occupancy. So it they is, don't get the CFO in without, without the without the certificate of completion. Yeah. I, I don't disagree, but okay. if, I, if I you understand. ask him, he'll be like, well that doesn't it, that's that's not really in your wheelhouse. It's yeah. a certificate of completion that is. But okay. it's like a punch list that could go on for a year. One if is you don't tie it to that what's per view and one is not. Correct. Correct. So and and I, so so I think it's all the same. We got to make it through the list, <laughs> regardless of yep. of what it is at the end of the at the end of that. Um, and uh, and I think we're in a good position to do it. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, I think certainly uh, Laura and Carol are very familiar with uh, many of the obligations. And uh, and like I said, it's not like we're going to hold it tight and not say, "Oh, this isn't done yet." Absolutely, we'll be pushing to get those things done as mm -hmm. we kind of go. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not, it's, we're not, we're not waiting for a big bang, you know? It's not a pop quiz. <laughs> no, exactly. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So, um, so anyway, so hopefully you'll see that uh, coming out from uh, Carol uh, sometime this week, um, if not early next week, and then uh, be in a position to at least talk about it on December 16th. What do we, so we've got, Are we've got you the, and Jonathan communicating about 
You said that he, it needs a little more work. Is that in his court right now? It's probably in mine. Okay. Because I think he. I know it's not in ours. <laughs> no, it's not <laughs> so in yours. Just want to be it's sure not in yours. I want. I want to simplify it. Right now, it's pretty complex. Okay. It needs needs less bows. Clarity. Okay. Yeah. It needs right. needs less ribbons. Okay. Um, so that's that's my view of it anyway. So. Okay. Were you asking what's on the December sixteenth? Yeah, on December sixteenth, we've got uh, no possibly Millbrook. Yeah. Definitely. Are we, are we definitely on for that? It's all on my calendar, but I can't open my calendar on my phone. That's fine. That's fine. I, um, I think it's a pretty, have, but maybe we have a long meeting going into the holidays and everything else. I, I'm, I might push us a little bit that night, if that's okay with everybody. Do we have a big group coming for this? We have a 11 men before, right? Right. Um, maybe not all. The Master Plan Advisory Committee members, um, I expect nine of them. Right. Um, the consultant may come. She was interested. Um, and the um, liaison, I bet, would be here, I think. Mm. Is there anything else we want to, we've never met them before, at least as it were. And we're we've got one item, which is uh, the one we talked about. Is there anything else we want to talk about? Communicate to them? Or, or, or them to us? Do they want to, what do you think, Christine? Is it something that they should, other than this? It's a great opportunity. Okay. Yeah, I know, it that's is. what I'm just wondering. Yeah, it is a great opportunity. I mean, if we had comments on the sections that are out, positive comments or negative, I mean, is there that a, might be helpful for the, for them to hear. I mean, is it kind of like a progress, not a progress report, I don't want to, just somebody talks about where they are in the process. Short Actually, that would, that, would, yeah, Short that would be great. Sure. That would be that would be nice, like a and, ten and minute. And face to face is a lot better. Than That's better. Before. That might be. Um, better from the consultant, but the committee may know more after Thursday's meeting. Maybe the after this yeah, meeting. I mean, maybe that's... Maybe what you say? The Master Plan Advisory yeah. Committee meets this Thursday. Yeah, well then, but we're And they them. haven't met since November 7th, so... So they may have something meeting. to tell us. They, they may... They, they don't know yet, because they, they haven't convened since the 7th, since, since that big workshop. So... We can well, bring it up. How, about, how about this? If, if, if Judy can come, and I think it would be nice if she could, um, you know, just a 10 or a 15 minute kind of update on process, uh, where we Charlie, are, if he knows. or Charlie, yeah, update yeah, on process, uh, timing, and next steps. I mean, it, it would be just nice to hear a little bit of a summary, but really we're talking about, you know, 15 minutes. Right. Does the board yeah. have the schedule? I, the I'd current like schedule? I don't, I, I don't know that Maybe we, have. we can we send have. that out, Karen. I don't know that we have. Yeah, I think it's also a primer for us. I mean, we are one? the approving board. Whatever schedule yeah. is being used. Oh, I, I, think it's a, I think it's a real good idea. I guess I was just saying, I, I guess I'm not that thinking it's like the best them having to do an hour presentation. No, no, no. no, no, you no, know, no, no, no. Or anything like that. If we had the schedule, we could more, react more, to it too and ask questions. Exactly. More informal. More informal, 15 minutes. That way, and then and then maybe get you on the Millbrook for a half hour to 45. You know, and then... and then Maybe whatever I did, I think could be short too because I don't want to overwhelm them with any... Yeah, well, I figure, you know, make the presentation like 20 and then 20 for exactly. questions or something Sounds like good. that. So, uh, and discussion would be probably the, the best column. We'll just schedule an hour total, yeah. maybe, yeah. and do it that way. Yeah, that sounds good. Does that sound like a okay plan? Yeah. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. Can we go back to 30-50 Mill Street for a moment? Um, just for the board's information, um, you're aware that the property is being sold by Wood Partners. I wasn't aware. I wasn't aware. Oh. I was well, I guess this is for information. Wood Partners is selling 30-50. They're selling Alta. It's um, it's closing... Around the 20th, I would say. Of mm -hmm. December. Mm -hmm. So Laura's been in contact with Eddie Grady to be sure that the buyer is informed of the affordable housing obligations, but I also think it's important for us to be sure that Wood Partners is communicating at the time of closing in some manner the fact that there is public access in as a condition of the special permit. There's public access promised across the site from the bike path to the pocket park. You may recall that I suggested strongly that it be recorded um, as an easement, but it was felt, I think persuasively, it was it was argued persuasively that because it's a condition of the special permit, that it was 
uh, it would persist through future owners. But that means that you will have to enforce that condition and monitor that condition. So I guess two things. I think that it, you, you may want to consider a formal communication to Alta and then a formal communication to the future owner. Um, I was hoping that you wouldn't have to monitor that condition with future owners, but if it's not in the deed, you're always going to have to monitor your conditions. So the only, I, I think that's fine, and with the board's permission, if you wanted to draft up a letter, I'd be happy to, to okay. sign it. My only, my only concern is, is in what other conditions are there that we're not saying something about? You, you, um, that that we I you, see where you're headed. Yeah, I don't want to say that that's provide a copy of the special permit and say yeah. please. Yeah, be I think that's maybe. I think among other things, included, and in, you could highlight a few in exactly uh, yeah. among other things. Blah blah blah. But please see yeah. the special permit which is attached. I think actually that's probably the right way to go about it. Just because, in the end, you know, um, I just don't want to point out one or two things and think mm -hmm. that the others aren't aren't important. And the flashing beacon is certainly something they should know that is still yeah. in play, yep. right? But that escrow is in our control, correct? It is in our control, okay. right? We do. Right. Until March. Yeah, no, I'm saying, but... <laughs> well, <laughs> or after it's that, in our yeah. control. I mean, we have to release it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we could extend the release date yeah. if we needed to. Right, if we have plans yeah. to, to use it. Doesn't it doesn't say that, but, but it is in our hands. Yeah, so. we got okay. that. Okay, you control the, the literal press strings. Yep. As far as we're uh, sort of reminiscing about all the. <laughs> and I, I don't have much reminiscing so to nostalgic. do because that was before my time. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, there are some changes that are were proposed at that time about the Mill Street, Jason Street, <coughs> Mass Ave intersection. Right. And. Mill. Jason. Yeah. 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 And I know that. Uh, TAC, I believe, has presented these to the Board of Selectmen already. Um, but just wondering if anyone knows what the status of that is. And is that tied into any of the escrow money that we have from Alta? That's tied into CVS. Yeah, that was the yeah. CVS, CVS money. CVS. Oh, that was the CVS yeah. money. Yeah, because we did that, what, about six months ago? We talked about that. Yeah, yeah. that's what okay. I remember too. That's six months ago. What is. They have hired an engineer, okay. and uh, I believe that it's just basically light retiming and then the synchronization with the light up on. And I think they were going to make certain, certain lanes yes. left only. Right. Right. Yeah, so, right. so maybe Shave some. Shave a little bit off the median and right. take okay. of Jason to make two full lanes so right. that they turn right. lane. And so the engineering is being prepared now? Yes. And then that would go to construction roughly? Probably the spring. If there's actual construction, it has to wait till the spring at this point. Mm -hmm. but um, if light timing, I'm not sure if that could happen before. And what's what's that CVS? Is that we've got enough time to do all that with the CVS? Yes, that is, I believe we had five years okay. on that one. Okay. Would okay. you double check? 2010 to 2015. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't had an eye on that. Good. Okay. And we've used some of their money for I remember the, the um, Opticon. Opticon. Yep. Mm -hmm. I remember that. And that is in, I saw it working the other day. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Never seen see that. it in action. Uh, flashing on. Right, the, to let the fire trucks in the. Top. So is the police too? They can override. I know fire, yeah. I think it's any emergency vehicle. They all have it. But especially fire. Change it. Yeah. I don't know. Um, okay. So that's thanks for bringing that up about wood partners. Yeah. Do we, it is, it, the special permit is recorded with the deed, but I don't think people always look at it, so I think it's... I think it's well, yeah, I would, for a deal of that, yeah, yeah, too, they're gonna, I uh, would say that they're going to look they're at it. I mean, it doesn't it. hurt to send this letter. I'm yeah. all in favor of doing that, but um, I think people would be rather remiss in their, <laughs> of their undertaking, yeah. too. Yeah, I guarantee you that they're looking at it if they're talking about money exchanging yeah. that side. <laughs> but that I don't want to sound cynical, uh, but it seems that... They would always look at every document in a transaction, but it might be strategic for them to pretend they never saw it. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think so. So, well, but in, it's easy for them to say later on if if if, um, if they can feign they uh, weren't aware of it. But I don't want to yeah, even I'm test sure, that out. I'd rather just yeah, get ahead of it. I mean, I'm sure that someone's doing a zoning opinion on that, and that would be, you know, 
one of the most essential documents of, that, that you would look at. That's encouraging to hear. Good. Yeah. Um, so, was it Jeff or Scott who said uh, they thought it was, is, is it around 85 to 90 percent? Complete? Com or, yeah. or full. Yeah, or full. I, full. Right. I have heard that. I heard oh. 85 not long That's ago. That's good to so. It is good. It's good. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, I think the next thing is the approval of the minutes. Uh, they're all, we had a couple no-shows the last time, as I recall. Mm. But one of the no-shows actually voted. I saw that, I too. Saw that too. <laughs> I saw that, too. Uh, From you afar. Think, you think I wasn't here? Mr. Yeah, exactly. I'm watching. Your, your spirit is always here, Andy. Uh, Bruce. Okay, I have four quick ones here. So, third paragraph, first line, last word should be A-N, and, instead of and. It, oh, wait a minute. That may be, I may be more than three paragraphs. I'm sorry. So, the, the paragraph in the middle of the page that begins, Mr. Kerr then reported that he asked outside counsel Jonathan Book to coordinate and inventory. And inventory. Okay. Then about two thirds of the way down the page, uh, sort of under that document use work tracking report update, and then the paragraph that follows, there's a sentence that begins on the fourth line that reads The escrow was established in March, and they intended to look in September. And um, it, I think, would benefit from saying they intended to review it again, or review the situation in September. Okay. Um, two lines below that in the sentence that reads, Miss Kowalski commented that it is no clear, or should be not clear to the board. And you need the air. Pardon me? And you need that, that it, it, that it is. is not clear. Oh, clarity. that it is not clear. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, then uh, two more lines, or the line below that, where it says, Mr. Kerr asked where is had been used successfully. It, I think should say where it has been used successfully. Or where it had been is okay. But is should be it. I understand what you're saying, I just can't find it. It's oh, okay. Right, uh, it's the exact line under... The no clear line. The no clear line. Mr. Kerr asked where it is. Oh, where? Okay. Thank you. And then last, uh, the, uh, my last comment, on the second page, end of the first paragraph, um, I think Mike was only seconding motions as necessary because we had a three-member board that night. So on the last approval of the minutes that Andrew Pennell moved to approve, I seconded those. Okay. Andrew? I have no further changes aside from being confused with Andy. on a vote. <laughs> yeah, so so that one is, you've the got... Second separate paragraph there. In yeah, I'm Simmons. just looking back in my notes to see who could have really... Um, it would have been... It would have been me. It would have been Andrew. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you probably saw the Andrew. Okay. Muscle That's memory put Andy on. I have one comment, even though Go I wasn't it. there. The, the paragraph about the work tracking report update where you're talking about the intersection of the Minuteman with Mill Street. It's un un written in here that you're discussing the flashing signal. And I'm thinking maybe it needs to be written. Like when it says on the third line, the special mm -hmm. permit calls for having Transportation Advisory Committee evaluate it. Oh, okay. Unless okay. we're talking about the whole intersection and all of this. So the, yeah, well, just, the flashing signal the, seems the, to be what you were talking about. The flashing beacon at the Minuteman bikeway. Crossing. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's fine. Or you could just replace it with a uh, flashing beacon. Evaluate the flashing beacon. Yeah. You could do that too. Either way. 
Somewhere in there, I think it should say flashing. Soon, though, because I was wondering, what are we evaluating? Because I wasn't here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But it's good for me not okay. to hear somewhat sometimes, yeah. All right, I think those are, you want to make a motion? Okay. Okay. I'll move to approve the minutes of November 18, 2013 as amended. Seconded. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. The three of us, the other two abstaining. Uh, anything else? Okay. Are we having a Christmas dinner? Yeah, that's a good question. You knew I was going to ask that, didn't you? Was that a year ago? It was. It was? <laughs> wow. I didn't, I would never have guessed that. And I'd be willing to organize it again. You know. That wasn't too hard. Was I know, Christmas? I think it would be nice, but why don't we try to do it, how about a post holiday sure. that early January meeting. Sure. Whatever we and end up at. Much better idea. That's we'll, fine. Uh, right after New Year's. Maybe we'll have our meeting. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Hopefully it won't be that long a one and maybe we can um, get yeah. a, you know get to get somewhere around eight o'clock or so. Does that make some sense? Sounds good. Yeah. And maybe we idea. can hit one of the new restaurants. Then we'll in town. we'll just we'll just uh, keep our meeting if open. We want to. Yeah. And we'll keep our meeting open. Yes, yes, yes. And all who want to come over can come on over. Yeah. So, they have to pay. <laughs> Just like we do. <laughs> okay, uh, that sounds good. Yeah, I, I like that idea. That's I can't we'll believe it's a year, though. That's yeah. the thing that I'm amazed it's at. So. Town meeting will be here before you know it. The world's um, open, right? <laughs> is it? It is, I think, isn't oh it? It's open today or oh tomorrow. Today or tomorrow? Oh, I thought it opened at the last board of selectmen meeting. I misread my calendar too. Yeah. No, you're probably right. Calendar. You're more in the thick of things. You're right. <laughs> that doesn't mean I can keep track of the balls when they're being pitched at me. <laughs> <laughs> you're just batting them away, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. The last thing on the uh, agenda is I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Seconded. You got me. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.